Even though they still punch hard in the market, Bacardi has become an underrated name among liquor customers these days when it comes to rum, even though they're the ones who made it fashionable. Why? And how did Bacardi make rum fashionable? We'll find out in today's video. The story starts with a boy named Facundo Bacardi Masso, who was the son of a humble bricklayer. Born in Sitges, in the province of Barcelona, Spain, he certainly grew up poor, but no details about his early life are known as we fast forward to his arrival in Cuba in 1830, alongside his brothers. It took a while, but eventually in 1843, he would set up his own shop. He soon wed Lucia Emilia Victoria Moreau, a woman from a very affluent family of Franco-Haitian descent, just three months earlier. It didn't take long for them to have kids, and as such, Emilio was born in 1844, Juan in 1846, Facundo Jr. in 1848, Mara in 1851, Jose in 1857, and Emilia Jr. in 1861. Tragedy would strike soon, however. Juan and Mara perished in the 1852 earthquake and cholera epidemic that devastated Santiago. The earthquake had a magnitude of 7.0, and Facundo and Emilia made the decision to take the family to Catalonia to stay with Facundo's parents for several months in order to protect the lives of their children. Later that year, Facundo returned to Santiago to find his store looted. The economy, struggling in the wake of the catastrophe, and a global glut of the country's primary export, sugar. Facundo's company, Facundo Bacardi Compania, failed to rebound and filed for bankruptcy in 1855. While Cuba at the time did not lack natural disasters, it did lack one thing, and that was good quality rum. Facundo started experimenting with the rum distillation process after spotting a demand in the spirits industry for a premium Cuban rum, as rum used to be a nasty, inferior beverage compared to red wine and whiskey. José Leon Bautier, a French Cuban, assisted Facundo as he started experimenting with different distillation techniques. A proprietary single yeast strain, a parallel distillation process, charcoal filtration, and white oak barrel aging were combined with revolutionary rum-making techniques to produce a much more sophisticated, milder drink that they were able to sell with success through Facundo's brother's general store. Using money provided by Facundo's younger brother Jose, the partners formed the company Bacardi Boutier & Company on February 4, 1862 and bought a distillery outside of Santiago. Facundo Bacardi recognized the value of effective branding after running a general retail company in Cuba for many years. His innovative rum would benefit from this strategy. His wife, Amelia, also suggested using a bat as a logo after spotting a colony of fruit bats hanging in the distillery rafters. Taking it as a sign of family harmony, good fortune, and health, he started signing each shipment of rum with a bold Bacardi M for Bacardi Maso. The company changed its name to Bacardi & Company in 1874. Jose, the younger brother of Facundo, decided to sell his shares, and as Boutier's health deteriorated, his sons invested some of their own money and purchased the majority of Boutier's stake. Bacardi's rum gained recognition as it spread throughout Cuba and even the rest of the world after taking top honors in international competitions. Facundo retired in 1877 and gave his sons control of the business. Cuban history experienced political upheaval in the years that followed as the nation fought Spanish imperialism. Cuba had been an imperial subject of Spain for a very long time. Facundo generally supported the Spanish, but Emilio, who was in charge of the company and was heavily involved in politics and the struggle for Cuban independence, raised suspicions from the authorities. Facundo and Emilio were taken into custody during one of the many sweeps conducted by the Loyalist Security Services. The business was run by the remaining brothers during Emilio's four-year incarceration, while Facundo was released, with Emilio giving strategic counsel from the distance. Facundo passed away peacefully in 1886, long before Cuba achieved its independence with U.S. intervention and his sons had to deal with the Spanish colonial government until 1898. 
The original Cuba Libre and the Daiquiri cocktails were both developed with the then Cuban-based Bacardi rum at the end of the Cuban War of Independence when the U.S. was in control of Cuba. Success and fame soon followed, and Emilio Bacardi was elected as Santiago's first Democratic mayor in 1899. Emilio built schools and hospitals, finished city projects like the well-known Padre Pico Street and the Bacardi Dam, provided funding for parks, and adorned Santiago with statues and monuments while serving in public office. Also started around this time was the company's international expansion by opening bottling plants in Barcelona, 1910, and New York City. His brother, Facundo M. Bacardi J., continued to run the organization in Santiago, 1916. The Prohibition-era closure of the New York plant coincided with a boom in U.S. tourism to Cuba, which led to a period of rapid growth for the Bacardi company and the emergence of the cocktail culture in America. After Prohibition, Bacardi started making rum in Puerto Rico in 1936. This allowed the company to sell rum duty-free in the United States. The establishment of Bacardi Imports Incorporated in Manhattan, New York City in 1944 marked the company's later expansion into the United States. The good times continued to roll. The Bacardi family backed and helped the rebels during the Cuban Revolution in 1959. However, the family continued to fiercely oppose Fidel Castro's policies in Cuba in the 1960s after the revolutionaries' victory and his turn to communism. The family and the company left Cuba in exile after the Cuban government arbitrarily seized their Cuban assets on October 14, 1960, nationalizing all private property on the island and outlawing all bank accounts, according to Tom Jelton's book, Bacardi and the Long Fight for Cuba. Bacardi now had a score to settle after being banished from their motherland. It had to develop quickly in order to combat the world's most audacious communist government. Once Bacardi had established itself successfully, it started to divert a sizable portion of its profits toward achieving its single objective, the overthrow of Fidel Castro and Cuban communism. In order to ensure that Fidel Castro was unable to gain from Bacardi's unique processes, company executives decided to enact a particular self-destruction mechanism. The last of the yeast cells, that particular breed, discovered 150 years ago from the roots of a sugarcane plant that made Bacardi what it was, had their genetic code for Bacardi rum successfully destroyed. A nationalized Bacardi could not compete and sustain the Castro government from then on. Prior to the revolution, the company moved the ownership of its trademarks, assets, and secret recipes out of the country to the Bahamas and had already started producing Bacardi rum at other distillery locations in Puerto Rico and Mexico due to worries about the previous Cuban leader, Fulgencio Batista. After the Cuban government unlawfully confiscated all of Bacardi's assets there, this assisted the company in surviving. The Helms-Burton Act which tightened the U.S. embargo against Cuba, was actively drafted with input from Bacardi's attorneys. In 1965, over a century after the company was founded in Cuba, Bacardi planted new roots and relocated its global headquarters to Hamilton, Bermuda. The company has continued to endure since then. Section 211 of the Omnibus Consolidated and Emergency Appropriations Act also referred to as the Bacardi Act, was drafted in 1999 by Otto Reich, a lobbyist in Washington working for the Bacardi brand. Section 211 did not grant trademark protection to goods produced by Cuban companies that were seized following the revolution. The Havana Club brand in the United States was the target of the act. Jose Arachabala S.A. created the brand, which was then unjustly taken over by the government during the Cuban Revolution. The Archibala family then fled the country and the rum was no longer produced. As a result, they permitted the Havana Club U.S. trademark registration to expire in 1973. The Cuban government registered the mark in the United States in 1976 by taking advantage of the lapse. Thus, Bacardi remains in control of its own destiny from Bermuda. Drinks made by Bacardi are not widely available in Cuba today. The primary rum brand in Cuba is Havana Club. The Archibala family, the brand's original owners, later sold it to Bacardi. 
With the exception of the United States and its territories, the Havana Club products are sold internationally by the Cuban government in collaboration with the French firm Pernod Richard. Based on the original recipe from the Archibala family, Bacardi developed the real Havana Club rum, produces it in Puerto Rico, and markets it in the U.S. Bacardi is still fighting in the courts to have its own Havana Club trademark recognized outside of the U.S. Facundo L. Bacardi is the current chairman of the company, owing to its rich family history and the constitution of the Bacardi family itself. In Coral Gables, Florida, Bacardi USA leased a 15-story office building in 2006. Seven buildings in Miami-Dade County housed employees of Bacardi at the time. The former Bacardi headquarters buildings on Biscayne Boulevard in Midtown Miami have been demolished. The National Young Arts Foundation's headquarters are currently located in the structure. 19 million 9-liter cases of Bacardi rum were sold globally in volume in 2021. As the entire liquor industry has benefited from a sales boost from lockdowns, so has Bacardi. With well-known brands like Bacardi Rum and Patron, Bacardi was planning to introduce over 40 new products in 2021, which, according to a brand spokesperson, would have been a record for the company's long history. A large number of the launches have been and will continue to be in popular subcategories like Ready to Drink (RTD) and Low Alcohol by Volume (LABV). Low ABV. Bacardi has increased the number of RTD and Low ABV product launches by three and four times, respectively, in the first few months of 2021 compared to the entire year of 2020. Pete Carr president of Bacardi North America, told Modern Retail that Bacardi is investing heavily in new products in anticipation of the fact that, quote, people have been pent up, they're excited to go out, they're excited to see friends, I think this is going to be big, it's going to be like the Roaring Twenties, according to alcohol research firm IWSR. Alcohol was one of the many industries that saw a significant shift to online sales in 2020 with e-commerce alcohol sales reaching $5.6 billion, or 5.5 billion euros, up 87% from 2019. As a result, a lot of the investments and acquisitions made in the alcohol industry in 2020 were aimed at improving e-commerce and delivery capabilities. However, Bacardi plans to emphasize moments of reconnection in its marketing more than its delivery and e-commerce capabilities because people have been yearning for the return of in-person events. The rum business is now fiercely competitive. Therefore, major players are working to develop new rum products in order to gain a competitive edge in the market. To meet the growing demand for rum, they are primarily focused on producing premium and ultra-premium rum product lines. Market participants are concentrating on R&D to develop numerous new rum flavors. For instance, Bacardi launched its Bacardi Ocho premium rum brand in July 2019, specifically for Indian customers. Given the conservative nature of the Indian liquor market, its success was significant. One of the most well-liked alcoholic beverages used to make a variety of cocktails, such as the mojito and daiquiri. Rum is a versatile blender that is essential for every well-stocked bar because of its sweet flavor. It can be found in a variety of beverages, from fantastic tiki drinks to cozy winter drinks. Bacardi has played one of the most significant roles in fostering this rum culture, and will keep doing so. Have you already heard of the story of Bacardi? And are there any other details that you would have added to this video? Share it in the comments. And if you'd like to see more inspiring business videos, then make sure to check out our channel.